All right, doing something a little different today, going on a run, asking the questions the students are going to be asking. This is the Copernic. They're going to be asking astronaut Jeff Williams about 18 questions. They've got 18 planned questions. They ended up asking 19, and I'll be dictating them right here for you. First question, Dominic. He wants to know about robots. He says they're building robots at their camp, at their summer camp, at the Copernic Observatory and Science Center. He wants to know if they use robots. He says, if you, if you use robots, how do they help you? Okay, here we go, Dominic. Here's your answer. Listen up. Should be in range of Copernic right now. Kilo 2 Zulu Romeo Oscar, this is November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra. I have you loud and clear, over. And I'm ready as well, over. Dominic, uh, the main uh, robot that we have is the robotic arm outside, and we use it to build the space station. We currently use it to sustain the space station. In fact, we're using it today and tomorrow to put on a new part outside, over. I'm dehydrated. <laughs> I peed earlier, it was so yellow. <laughs> you should always hydrate well before you start doing your activity. So, best I could do was fill up this Camelback a whole lot, and I gotta drink it right now. <laughs> okay, doing a trail run. I like trail running because it's better for your legs, a little softer. Maybe not good for running with a big old camera, digital SLR. Woo! All right, let's do the next question. This is Olivia. Olivia wants to know about, okay, Olivia wants to know, has anything broken on the space station? And if so, how did you fix it? Yo, I got an answer for you, Olivia. Yes, things break. Well, let's listen to Jeff Williams' answer right now. Bam. Olivia, many things break on the space station over time, but just like your house or your car, we have spare, we have spare, we have spare parts on board and we're trained to fix it. So we're repairing things uh, regularly, over. Okay, let's get another question. Question three, here we go. This is by Isaac. What interests or activities did you have when you were young that helped you in qualifying for your current position? All right, Isaac, here comes your answer. Bam! Isaac, when I was young, my favorite uh, topics became math and science. and In particular, my interest in science uh, led me on the path to qualify me for my current position. Over. Let's do it, let's do it. Another question from Ryan. How long have you been at the space station? Easy answer. Here we go. Answer. Ryan, I've been here this time since March 18th. Uh, this is my fourth trip to the space station. Over. Okay, another question before we get to the bridge. Stephanie asks, how long did it take you to get to use, woo, 90 degrees. Stephanie asks, how long, how long did it take you to get used to microgravity and what are some effects from microgravity, microgravity you have noticed? Here's the answer. Stephanie, it takes most people a few days to get used to being in microgravity uh, to get over the, maybe a little bit of sickness and also just to get used to working in a place where everything floats over. Okay, easy question. Number five, do you have internet up in space? Here's the answer. So we do have very limited internet. We can log in once in a while, but it's very slow. So for example, I don't stream any video on the internet over. Colin wants to know the following about weather. What is it like? <laughs> Here's the answer. Actually, let me clarify. He wants to know what it's like in space. Okay, that gives some context to Jeff Williams' answer. Colin, when we talk space weather, we talk usually uh, uh, radiation storms from the sun. Uh, but the weather, the earth weather that we see every day is all below us. Oh crap, I forgot to ask a question while I was running. Here's the question from Thomas. How do you sleep while floating in space? And here's the answer from Jeff Williams. Thomas, we each have a, a small crew quarters and I have my sleeping bag strapped to the wall in the, in the crew quarters and I zip it up and it contains me uh, attached to the wall, over. Colin wants to know this. What did you have to study in school to become an astronaut? A common question for astronauts. Let's see the answer now. I studied uh, mostly math and science and engineering. I have uh, degrees in aeronautical engineering and that qualified me for this job, over. All right, let's do the next question. 
Do you have children? If so, how do you communicate with them while you're away? I do have children. I also have grandchildren. I have two sons. They're both married, and one of them has four children of his own. So I communicate with them via telephone and also via email. And once a week or so, we have a video teleconference over. Next question. Are you working on any research or science projects in space? Answer, now. Ethan, we're working on many science and research projects from all the disciplines of science to include studying ourselves, doing studies of the human body and the effects of weightlessness, but all, also things like cells and plants and material science and many other things, over. Okay. I heard training to be an astronaut can be very difficult. What was the toughest part of the training for you? Over. <laughs> Well, many things that, that we train are, are, are difficult. Doing spacewalks, that's training difficult. In fact, we're going to do a spacewalk tomorrow that we've trained for. Probably the toughest part, though, is all the travel to Russia, Japan, and Germany, as well as Houston, to get all of the training done. Over. Okay, I've listened to uh, a lot of these errors air, 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 radio in the National Space Station school context before. This question is pretty common, and unfortunately, I didn't hear it, which would have been... I didn't hear it at one of the coolest places they could have asked it. They did a contact from a school in Roswell, New Mexico. The question is, have you ever seen a UFO? Answer. Samuel, I've never seen a UFO. I haven't seen anything that can't be explained. Uh, those are mostly science fiction and fairy tale stories that people like to propagate over. I got another question coming at you as soon as I read this one for you. <laughs> okay, this is three questions in one, all on the same topic. What do you eat when you are in space? How do you pack food to take into space? Does it all need to be freeze dried like astronaut ice cream? Curious to know myself. Here is the answer. Bam! We have lots of food and a lot of it is dried and some of it comes in packets ready to eat where you just heat it up, open the packet and, uh, uh, and then eat it. And other food comes in cans uh, and other packages similar. So we have, a, we have great food on board, over. <sighs> okay, here's another question. What do the other astronauts do for fun in their downtime? Woo! Here's the trail. Oh, we might enjoy time around the meal. We spend a lot of time in the window taking pictures of the Earth. Uh, we might spend some downtime calling home or family or friends uh, or emails to family and friends. Over. I made it out of the trail. Made it out of the trail. Back on my road, in my neighborhood anyway. Woo! Breeze. That feels nice. Okay, let's do this. Question. At what age did you first become interested in being an astronaut? Well, I think I was certainly interested in it by age 12, uh, but I did realize that I could maybe have a chance to uh, participate in space exploration until I was closer to 20, over. Next question. What languages do you speak? We speak Russian and English on board and we use both languages every day, over. I'm gonna finish this run strong, y'all. I'm not stopping. Okay. The last prepared question, right before I turn this corner. What is your day like? in space. Hello Wyatt, uh, a day, we work a 24 hour day up here. We wake up typically 6 in the morning. We're, we're going to work at 7.30 or 7.15 or so. We work till about 7 in the evening and then have the evening free for, for dinner and whatnot. We get a lunch break. We usually have weekends off as well. Over. One more question that wasn't prepared and released as a press release. This question is related to a spacewalk they were having on the following day. This contact was on Thursday, the spacewalk was on Friday. And that was it. The question was about the spacewalk. Here it is. Absolutely, we've been uh, preparing for it over the last couple of weeks. We did the final reviews today. The suits are ready. We're going outside early. About your time, it'll be a little, a little close to noon or so, maybe a little before your time. We'll go outside, we'll spend six and a half hours outside the primary task will be attaching a docking adapter on the very front end of the space station to prepare for future commercial vehicles, which are scheduled to, uh, to uh, start flying the space station within the next couple, three years or so. Woo! 
Back where we started. ISS is almost gone. You are very welcome, and uh, it's a great program. It looks like you're in today. I'm sure you're having a lot of fun up there, and uh, it's perking your interest in, in science, engineering, and technology. So well done. It's great talking to you today. Over. Kilo 2 Zulu, uh, Romeo Oscar, this is November Alpha 1 SS. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Over and out, actually. Activity stopped. Okay, battery's about to die. Thank you for watching. This is John Breyer, KG4AKV73. Thanks for watching Space Comms. Have a great day. Kilo call 4, Alpha Kilo Victor, uh, Fox Mike 0, 05. Kilo Golf 4, Alpha, Kilo, Victoria, Kilowatt 4, Foxtrot, Echo, Golf. Kilowatt 4, Foxtrot, Echo, Golf. This is Kilo Golf 4, Alpha, Kilo, Victor. Um, Fox Mike 05, name is John. This is my first contact on um, the satellite. Well, kill yourself, John. Nice to uh, make your acquaintance here, and uh, happy to be your first contact. <laughs>